the conductor will be following the, the, the music, right, following the, the, the film uh, using, using a time code. But at the same time, there are some key moments where I can, you know, wait for him for the next, for the next big, you know, scene. So you've really got to choreograph together. That's right. The music and the visuals. Now, the footage that I've seen, I imagine, is, is going to just be awesome for most of the people in the audience. Because first of all, if you've spent much of your life in Chicago, you don't realize how many stars are actually visible. So yes, you're absolutely right. This place, uh, Yellow Night, it's ideal uh, to see the auroras from because it's so dry and there's no light pollution. But then something that actually surprised even me is that the number of stars that I could see, because I have been to other locations, like in Chile and in South Africa, you know, Australia, where it's extremely dark. But um, yeah, the number of stars is incredible. And then combine that, that combined with all these incredible lights in the foreground, right, in our atmosphere, it's, it's just breathtaking. And to think that, you know, I, I mean, if Hollywood were to make a film about the Northern Lights, probably they would just create them in the studio, right? The way they wanted it. So you're not getting the real, you know, the real world. This is science. The beauty is indisputable. It's just spectacular. But the science might be intimidating. If you have somebody comes up to you and says, okay, I really don't know what a magnetic field is. I know the sun is a big star, but I, I don't get it. Mm. So, so give us your best shot at explaining how the northern lights are, 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 are generated. Produced. Yeah, right. So, what happens is that um, high energy particles from the from the sun, particles that have an electric charge, such as protons and electrons, they come from from the sun, and they uh, oftentimes they interact with 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 the earth. You know, sometimes they just miss the earth, but sometimes uh, these coronal mass ejections, they interact with, uh, with, uh, with the Earth. Most of these particles are deflected by the magnetic field of the Earth, but some are actually make their, their, their way into the magnetic field and they get trapped. Now, hold, hold on. Um, what is a coronal mass ejection? So coron Maybe we can show a picture of one. So, yes, and a coronal mass ejection is an event where these particles, you know, break loose. Okay, all at once, very, very, uh, very uh, violent e event. And uh, sometimes what happens is that magnetic field lines, they break and then all these uh, particles escape. Uh, you, you can actually see the magnetic field lines being traced by plasma. There's something called a prominence, which is like an arc um, on the surface of the sun. And what happens is that uh, plasma, that is charged, uh, electrically charged gas, flows through those magnetic field lines, and when they do, they trace something that otherwise would be invisible. So it's sort of like shining a flashlight through fog. Right, exactly. That's a, yeah, that's a good analogy. So, and then, and then we have a counterpart here. So then those particles come, interact with the magnetic field of the Earth. These particles get trapped in the, inside the magnetic field. And then these uh, particles rush are, are, are rushed uh, towards the uh, the planet itself, towards the uh, magnetic uh, poles, and when they do, all guided by the by the magnetic field of the Earth, they collide with molecules and atoms in our atmosphere, and in the process, they give energy to these atoms and molecules, and they make them give off light. Okay, depending on the element or atom and depending on the atomic transition well those differences in energy levels will are will correspond to different colors so for example oxygen will glow green and red as well and green is what you see mostly right? that's what you see mostly right and so what we're seeing is the magnetic field line that would other otherwise would be invisible but then get, they get rendered visible by the auroras themselves can you describe one moment in the music that made you go, oh, wow, I, I know the perfect footage for this. Well, let's see. Um, it, there's a part in the, in the, what I call the Aurora display, you know, that comes at the, at the end, and that's where I get to show my work as well as the work of some, you know, colleagues of mine. Um, and there's this part that the music is just, you know, it's just 
beautiful. It's very, very mysterious. And the music, like, the way I can describe it is like it, it, it shifts in, in pitch. And it just it works so well with the visuals. So I knew that that was the time for me to save some of the, the best footage and to show it at that particular time.